What's going on, fam? It's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lucky Murray here. And I got a really, really, really good, great interview. Um, we've been chopping it up off the camera, and I'm excited. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Uh, man, by chance, I was on Instagram searching for people, artists or whatever, and this brother right here came up, and I saw that he's doing a CHH um, throwback show. And I was like, oh, let me see how much he charges for mixes because, you know, I'm running uh, uh, in that radio station that plays Christian pop music. So I hit him up, and then this morning we started chopping it up, and then he started dropping gems on me. And I was like, oh, snap, we got we to gotta do this. We got to record this interview, whatever. So this is the one, the only DJ p Dog. I'm Man, when I tell you, if you don't know his name, the connection that he has, I'm telling you, man, he's going to break some stuff down that's like, <laughs> I, I was like, well, he was texting this stuff to me. I was on my computer, like, I couldn't take it. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is crazy. So I want to introduce DJ P-Dog. DJ P-Dog, how you doing today, sir? Bro, first of all, I'm excited to be here with the entertainer, the motivator, and the <laughs> educator himself. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir. And, and, and I got to tell you, bro, I, I pride myself off of bringing people onto my show mm. and, and giving them the big introduction. <laughs> I got to tell you, bro, that's like top 10 easy <laughs> that I've ever had. Oh, man. Um, which is really probably more like a top five because wow. a lot of people don't interview me, bro. Oh, it's, wow. I've only had like a handful of people actually interview me mm. ever um, in this thing. I've interviewed a billion people, bro. But, you know, so I'm, I'm excited to be on this side of the mic, bro. But I'm excited to be here with you, bro. And I'm appreciative that you reached out. Um, now, a lot of people have no idea who I am, and you are one of those people as of this morning. Yeah, <laughs> you know, max, max. Who I was, max. and that's okay, that's okay. So let me, if I may, um, allow sure. me to, to reintroduce myself. Uh-oh. You may. Um, so I've been um, a part of the, the Christian hip hop world, um, man, probably since, like one as a fan, like the late 90s. So I'm going, I'm going way back. And, and again, um, my brother, I, I don't want to, to be long winded. So please hit me with the time out, hit me with the pause, something, you know, if I, if I get too long winded here, the floor is yours, brother. I mean, <laughs> the floor is yours, you know, so yeah. what, how have you said, like I said today, I told my wife about it, everything else, the kids in bed, so we can make it happen, brother. So go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so back in the 90s, I was part of it. And then some, sometime around 2000, um, I thought that I was going to be a rapper. And so I started rapping, and that lasted for about, um, about a year, year and a half. And then I went to, um, to Liberty University um, in Lynchburg, Virginia, back in 2002. And um, I remember um, there was a speaker who was there speaking. Um, his name is Chris Williamson, very good friend of mine now. He used to be a part of a Christian rap group from way back in the day called Transformation Crusade. Um, and if anybody's a gospel head out there, there's an amazing gospel group, my favorite group, music group of all time, all genres, a group called Commission. And Commission had Transformation Crusade on a record called King of Glory, one of their big records. And so I'm at Liberty University in 2002. I'm listening to this guy speak, and he says that he used to be with Transformation Crusade. I'm like, oh, snap. Like, he, he rapped with my favorite group of all time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was talking about how he was uh, at Liberty. He was a Liberty student back in the day um, during the era of the DC Talk, Toby Mac, and all those cats. And he was saying, like, how the school put him on scholarship to do hip-hop ministry at Liberty University. Okay? Two weeks later... Um, there was a group at the school called the Sword Dunk Team, and they were like, man, we're looking for a DJ, and we're looking for somebody with some turntables, because we're trying to fill in this spot, we want this certain look, and blah, 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 and a friend of mine um, was like, hey, why don't you go out to the trial, you love music, you know, you got all the records, like at that time, I had every Christian hip-hop album out, Cross Movement, Grits, whatever, mm -hmm. you name it, I had it, and I said, okay, I don't have no turntables, but I'll show up. So I show up to the tryout, bro, and guess how many people at the tryout, bro? I mean, one. What? I'm the only one. I'm the only person that showed up to the tryout. Okay. The guy looks at me and says, "Listen, bro, you're the only one here. You're clearly interested. 
you got turntables? I'm like, nah, I don't have you. He said, listen, you go buy your set of turntables. We'll give you a scholarship to Liberty, a thousand dollars a semester, plus your travel, all expenses paid, this, that, and whatever. I had like $400 to my name. I spent 300 of that on my first set of turntables. And that was 17 years ago. And here we are. Mm. And I'm still rocking this thing. Um, so in that journey, I got to travel. Um, I got to do some cool, cool things, bro. I'm saying like my first year with the team, we, we were at the now the Verizon Center doing an event called the Jordan Capital Classic, which is like a high school all-star basketball game and it was a big game because it was the last high school game of this up-and-coming high school kid that's going to take the NBA by storm this cat named LeBron James this is his last <laughs> high school game and I'm standing in this this arena filled with people Jordan is there Patrick Ewan is there oh. LeBron James is there and I'm like this is insane like I, I went there on a whim to this tryout and now here I am in the Verizon you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right in for these dudes. And listen, when I was DJing, bro, I was playing, you know, cross movement. I was playing the Petty D's and and what have you, if those names even mean anything <laughs> to a lot of you. <laughs> I'll take it way back. But it was crazy because the the artists that were coming behind us was was Ludacris and Bow Wow. And here we are on this stage in this big arena filled with people, major people. We we're, we're pushing Christian hip hop, you know what I'm saying, out the speaker. So it was crazy. So, you know, fast forward, I did radio, got into radio and through radio, I got to meet some amazing artists, um, up and coming cats at that time, like Lecrae and Flame, um, had cross movement on my show, brought them to Liberty a couple of times. A lot of traveling, KJ52 has been on there. Um, I mean, you just about name any at this point, any old head in Christian hip hop, I've had him on my show. Yeah. You name him. I mean, give give me a come on, Lucky. Give me a try here, bro. I'm gonna give Thank you. you uh, so you probably had the most of Reach records on there, like I've Trevor, had everybody. Oh, oh yeah, so I've had everybody from Reach, with the exception of their current new roster. Gotcha. So you had so, the Rockers. Oh and, me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you had um, Derek Minor, probably when he was pro. Uh, Cannon, of course. Yep. Um, did you have the whole Reflection Music Group uh, with uh, him, Tony Tillman? Uh, yep. Steve so I, Bird, who he had? They had uh, what was my name? They had Sign. I forgot his name. Oh gosh, he was. I forget so, his name. Huh? So after while I was after I was done traveling with that group, the Sword Dunk Team, I started traveling with another hip hop artist named Humble Tip. Mm. We started out at Liberty, and yep. um, we started traveling together. And then after I was done with him. I started traveling with uh, with Lecrae and Reach Records. So everybody that was on that roster from the 2010s to, you know, again, I've worked with everybody on that roster except for their current new, the new waiver guys. So like What Up RG. Um, I've done a few small little things with 1K Few. Not a whole lot to say I've done something. Um, you know, Wande, I haven't done anything with her. Um, but everybody else, you know, from – you know, Lecrae, Tadashi, Shobaraka, KB, Andy Minio, Derek Minor, um, all those cats. I've done stuff with Flame, Thizzle, um, R. Swift, um, you know, I, the list goes on. Ambassador from Cross Movement. I, I mean, I've DJ for all these guys, you know, um, over the years. And so I've seen and heard a lot, bro. <laughs> so, and, you know, and, and the crazy thing is that you came in with a time where Christian hip hop was different. It was more so theology based, where you know you had to be heavy in mm. scripture. Uh, there was, and this is for me just doing research. Uh, mm -hmm. There were crews that went and rock with crews, depending on mm -hmm. what theology mm -hmm. that you that you uh, mm -hmm. saw. So if y'all didn't agree out of eye theologically, the, theologically wise, y'all weren't doing no music. You know, you weren't taking secular beats from <laughs> anybody. I mean, talk a little bit about that time when you came in and how yeah. the pop was just so different at that particular time. And then you also was following the time in the late 90s where, you know what I'm saying? It was like they were still in the wilderness at that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So I'll, I'll bring it to what I, was, what I would consider to be the cross movement era, okay? Mm. And so back then you had you had two main groups at that time. You had the East Coast Boom Bap Cats, 
So that's the cross movement. Everybody, you know, from Philly to New Jersey, New York, you had those cats. Then you had these cats on the West Coast, like um, the Gospel Gangsters and T-Bone. Yeah. Okay. So those guys, and, you know, they were doing music. And a lot of their music was, um, like, if you listen to some of their stuff, it's a little bit more, you know, kind of carved out into that Pentecostal charismatic world. Whereas these Philly cats, these cross movement dudes and these New York dudes, they were more into that reformed theology, mm. you know, mindset and, and in that lane. You know, one of the forerunners of that, that squad being the ambassador who was a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary. And if you know anything about that, it's like one of the most prestigious seminaries in the reform, um, the modern reformation movement. Mm. Um, and so you had these, these different worlds and yes, theology was, was a major piece. Then fast forward into the mid two thousands, you got down south movement that's popping off. So you got cats like Kent Jones, uh, Mr. Dell and all those cats mm -hmm. coming up. And, and at that time they were more rooted into another theology, um, which we would call more so like that prosperity gospel yeah. um, stuff. So you've got all, you got this concoction, bro, of these different areas. And, and yes, there were some times where, where yes, dudes would not perform with other, with other crews. Um, I don't want to put too much of that out there because I, I yeah. got stories for days, bro. But nonetheless, yeah. And, and it, was, it, it was that serious to where there was almost like a line in the sand that was drawn. Mm -hmm. So you've got that going on, okay? But then you've got this other piece that's going on too, because at that time, a lot of the rappers, like you said, were, were getting into churches and whatnot. But then you had this big movement that came out of Dallas called the XEX Ministries. Um, this cat named G. Craig Lewis had a whole movement oh. about... Um, Hip hop is the devil. Oh, God, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember that. That scared. So you, that scared yeah, that scared the crap out of me when I was uh, a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want I want your listeners to follow me here because you got to understand this history and, and the show where we are today because it all it all makes sense and I'm gonna tie it all up here in a second. So you've got these different theological movements going on. So you've got that beef going on, right? Yeah. Then you got this guy coming in making this huge wave through the church scene telling people, like, stop bringing these Christian rappers to your church, this, that, and whatever. There ain't no such thing as no holy hip-hop and, and that and this and what and this and that. And uh, one of the main reasons why this guy was successful, bro, is because um, even though Christian hip-hop is would at that time be considered like a church thing, hip-hop in and of itself didn't start in the church. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so a lot of people who were, like, I remember my, my parents, you know, coming to me saying, oh, you doing this hip-hop thing, okay, that, that'll pass over, that's just a phase. And then they're listening to different people that, oh, the people that created hip-hop are into witchcraft. Mm. And I'm like, what? what? They're like, yeah, they, they're they they call wizards and this, that. So listen, okay, you, re you ready for this, Lucky? I'm ready, if bro. You, if you research hip-hop, okay, the guy who invented the scratch, and I encourage anybody who says you're into Christian hip hop, go learn about the foundations of hip hop itself. Mm. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to put that as a footnote because all that's going to tie into to everything that we're talking about as well. The guy who invented the scratch, bro, is a DJ by the name of Grand Wizard Theodore. <laughs> so uh, these guys back in those days had these big lofty names like African Bimbada yeah, or yeah. Grandmaster Flash. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody hears a, 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 the word like wizard, oh, so automatically witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it, it's, so you have uneducated people who are already on the fence, church people, okay, mm -hmm. going back to this, who are already on the fence of how do we, do we accept this Christian hip hop thing? I don't know. The young people are digging it. They're talking about the Lord. But then this guy comes and says, no, exit all out. Well, we was already on the fence, and he just kind of pushed him over the fence. Uh, so you've got, and, and here's the thing, and this is very important. A lot of that was happening predominantly in the black churches. Uh, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now you've got Christian hip-hoppers who are like, well, dag, 
we wanted to do this thing because one, we we love the culture of hip hop. We want to do it in the church. We want to do it for the youth. But now the black churches aren't really accepting us. Where do we go? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now rewind. Dallas Theological Seminary. That's a predominantly white school. They got one of the biggest names in Christian hip hop at that time. The ambassador going to that school. Okay. So when you kind of get that, and I'm not saying that this is what what happened, but I'm saying I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it played a part, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. When you've got a, a school like that, that's like yes, yes, because G. Craig, they ain't hearing G. Craig. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is this is Dallas Theological Seminary. Yeah. If you're if you are preaching the gospel through your music, and it, it, it's uh, it's of orthodoxy or whatnot, we with it. We are with it, and so. Um, you've got this being pushed now, and now the consumers of Christian hip hop is now predominantly white people. Ah. Okay, so you've got that now. On the other side, you've got, like I said, my man who came from Liberty was a part of DC Talk, Toby Mac. Mm. He started a record label called Goatee Records. Mm. Okay, and Goatee Records had a lot of artists on there. They had some Christian hip hoppers, cats like Nota Verbs and Grits more than notably is, is grits you heard their music on mtv you know vh1 bet whatever back in the day okay so what they were doing was crazy but toby max audience was predominantly was a predominantly ccm white audience right yeah and so now christian hip-hop is being consumed by predominantly white culture not saying that's a bad thing however Again, if you understand hip hop, hip hop in and of itself started as a voice for the voiceless, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It started out for, you know, people telling stories to their music. So when you hear like, it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. So, you know, you're hearing those lyrics, you hear people telling their stories. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's what hip hop was all about. It was like the news of the hood. What was going on in the South Bronx and in the Queens and, you know, in, in those areas in the boroughs and then over on the West Coast, what was happening during the Reaganomics and the crack epidemic and whatnot. This is how they're getting the news out of what's going on in their hoods and whatnot. That's hip hop, right? That's a part of hip hop culture. Also a part of hip hop culture is the outcasts, people who, you know, were not down with the disco era, trying to figure out how to do all this and hip hop started with the DJs. Got to say that. Got to send yeah. a big shout out to, to the one and only Mr. Cool Hurt. <laughs> Always got to do that because without him, bro, we wouldn't like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Grandmaster Flash, I wouldn't have two technique 1200s. Mm -hmm. Like these guys are the pioneers. Um, and so, yeah, so to kind of bring it all the back where we are here with Christian hip hop. So you've got this this movement that's happening. Um, and I want to address one of the things that you said, and I think this kind of plays a part into it as well, mm -hmm. about the, the individuals who seem like to be the chosen ones, right? Yeah. And so let me tell you where that comes from. It, it's a music thing in general, okay? And I tell artists this all the time, and it took me to actually get into that world of being in there, in the, in the trenches, at the offices in Atlanta with Reach Records to see how this thing really, 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 really works, right? So when I started seeing how the business side of all this works, I said, okay, this ain't just me picking up the phone, calling the the local youth group, saying, hey, can you bring me in a rap for 50 bucks? Like I'm watching how the music industry is working. And one of the beautiful things that these guys did is they created a fan base. And when you create a fan base, you're able to monetize off of that fan base. You know what I'm saying? And th their fan base was based off of a movement, 116, Romans 116, Unashamed of the Gospel. Through that, um, they they just blew up. And a lot of people don't even know this, bro. Like, Lecrae, before these cats was big, man, actually, Lecrae didn't even, he wasn't even trying to be a rapper. This dude made real talk because he wanted people to hear his beats. Because mm. <laughs> he made beats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he just wanted, this, these cats were rapping for, um, underprivileged kids out in Missouri at a camp called Kids Across America. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's how I got to know them because cats mm -hmm. from Liberty used to go out there as counselors and would come back to me and say, hey, 
you heard of this guy Lecrae. I'm like, the heck is a Lecrae? Is that his real name? <laughs> like, what is what is that? Yeah. You know? Um, you know, so yeah, man, it's it's there's a lot. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. And I think I hope that I don't even remember what the question was, but um yeah. No, no, we can definitely piggyback off that because I, I think that what G. Craig Lewis did, because like I said, I was a teenager when somebody was like, yo, you know hip hop's for the devil. We was like, what? They was like, watch this. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, for somebody that's uneducated, me, I'm a, I'm a rapper. I said, oh, God. You know, am I going to hell? For, and I wasn't even saved like that then. I, yeah. And it, 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 for me, it seemed like now getting to Christian hip hop, that that took the relationship between Christian hip hop and the black church back 10 to 15 years because a lot of those um those thick those those different um um gosh what's the word i'm looking for those different um uh ideologies that g craig lewis implanted and a lot of the gatekeepers now you know they, they go off like that like we don't really need to be rocking with, with christian pop and you know with ccm they they grabbed it um so so you saw the shift um and then like you said a lot of these guys were just rapping just to you know, do it for the Lord and not really get nothing back from it. Um, yeah. So talk a little bit about the business side behind it, because a lot of, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, independent artists that want to get into this thing and they want to uh, make money from it. Um, and they see people like Lecrae, Chuck Lee, and Minio, Dizzo, Flame. And they see these cats and they're like, oh man, if only I can do what they do. So talk a little bit about um, the a little bit about the business side of it and then kind of explain from your perspective how an illusion can happen where you know it's not what it actually seemed to be yeah so with anything you know one thing that these artists need to realize bro is that they're not just artists and i think that was one of the biggest problems that i ran into myself um because i i've played so many different roles in this music thing in general like I've, I'm, I've been the artist that i've sent out to be booked i've been the promoter where i would book artists to come in and pay them money to come in and whatnot i will book festivals you know what i'm saying i was a road manager at one point for for some of the reach guys um you know so i've, I've played so many different roles and i think in all that it comes down to guys you're you're not just artists you're a business and if you don't look at yourself and conduct yourself as a businessman um, I think Jay-Z said it, said it best. He said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? Like you, he's a, he himself is a business. And I think every artist needs to realize that they're a business. Mm. And I was behind the, those curtains and I'm watching how Lecrae is moving. Okay. And then I'm watching, okay, let me see what Andy's doing. And what's KB doing? What's Tadashi doing? And all these guys were conducting business differently. And this is why you see how Lecrae just kind of lapped these guys, you know, two, three times over. Because mm. he was conducting business a different way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though they were all under the same label. And I think that that's another delu- illusion, or delusion rather, if I get to, um, to reach records, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make it. Yeah. And, and the reality of it is, bro, that's not the truth. You know what I'm saying? Um, one of the best new cats that's out right now, you may know him. His name is Aaron Cole. Yeah. And I remember doing a show with Lecrae, and, and Aaron was there, and he was trying to get Lecrae's demo. And, and I grabbed the demo, um, and, and I said, man, let me check this dude out. So me and him, you know, I listened to us, and, man, this dude is, is pretty nice. He's, uh, um, he's not amazing, but he's okay. Yeah. And then we started chopping it up. He was like, yeah, man, I'm only 14. I was like, 14? Holy <laughs> smokes, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. okay, that changes everything. Because yeah. you're a child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got some room, bro. Mm. And I remember, you know, me and, me and Cole were chopping it up. And I remember one day he hit me up. He'll probably kill me if I tell this story. But he sent me a DM one day. He was like, yo, bro, when you going to put me on? I'm like, put you on to what? Like, put me on with Reach Records. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, bro, it don't it don't work like that, man. Mm. It don't it don't work like that. And and I was trying to help him understand, like, even if a reach records do pick you up, bro, you still gotta work your butt off. Yeah. One of the hardest working dudes that I've seen that have like come up from the bottom to the top, 
real fast, bro, was Andy Minio. Mm -hmm. But I saw this guy work, bro. Like, dude was working, bro. Like, I remember we did our first tour with Andy. And I've known Andy eons, bro. I got, I got demos in my inbox from early 2000s where he was C-Light and Alex Medina, um, you know, one of the guys who used to produce for Reach back in the day, was sending me demos from, from C-Light, you know, <laughs> asking, to play, asking them to get them played on my show. Um, mm -hmm. And when, when he came out, you know, as Andy Minio, right before Formerly Known had dropped, we went on a tour with Lecrae called the Rehab Tour. Mm -hmm. And I remember working with Andy. He had his set, man. He was ready. And I was DJing for that tour. Um, and so I was DJing for him. And, and Thizzle was with us as well. And Thizzle was like, dude, this dude, Andy, is beast. He's like, I got to go watch his show every night because it don't get old. I said, bruh. I said, dude. Like, he was, he was being brought out on that tour as, like, a pre-show act. Okay? And he was killing it. The next year with Reach, he had dropped the full length album and he came out as an open act. Okay. The next year, he was co headliner. Mm. Okay. I watched this man work his butt off. Like, if anybody knows Andy Mino's been following, like the Saturday morning cartoons, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, that was all him, bro. That was all him. That wasn't the label, that was all him. Mm. This man worked. We would be out on tour, and we would be stopping in the city, and and I was like, "Yo, Andy, where you going, bro?" He's like, "Yo, man, I got to go write this album." You know, go in the hotel room. This dude got the whole situation set up to to a makeshift. He working. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I saw dudes. You know, there were cats who were hanging out. You know, and rightfully so. But <clears throat> I saw a dude working, and so you've got to work and grind. And that's what I was telling Aaron Cole, and then I brought him out to do some, some shows with me because I was doing some of my solo stuff at that time. And I would say, hey, man, come out. Let me bring you out and kind of help get your name out there a little bit um, out here at Liberty and whatnot. <clears throat> and he came out, man, real humble dude. And, and I remember having this long conversation. I think he recorded His dad recorded it and posted it up on YouTube of me just kind of sharing those nuggets. Like, you've got to take care of your own business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you just have to. If you think because you get on the front page of Rapzilla, okay, and, and I've been rocking with Rapzilla since day one, okay, when Rapzilla was a yellow site, <laughs> okay, I'm talking about when my man Phil Rude was going by the name DJ Zilla. That's how, that's how far back I go with Rapzilla. Nuggets right here, people. Okay. Nuggets right here. DJ Zilla. <laughs> DJ Zilla. You know, shout out to my man Phil Rude. He's no longer with Rapzilla. He's, he hmm. sold it off, but... He, he st and he was a kid, bro. He was a child, dude. He was like, gosh, man, I'm, I'm probably going to get his age wrong. He had to be no more than 16 when he started Rapzilla.com, okay? He was, a, he was a kid from Belgium, bro. He was living in Belgium. He wasn't even over here in the States. Wow. Okay? And that's, that's how far back I go wow. with Rapzilla. But, uh, but my point being... That's not the promised land. And a lot of people think, ah, if I get on Rapzilla, if I get the attention of a Reach Records, then I've made it. And it's like, no, bro. There's a lot of guys that a lot of you guys haven't heard of. I'm probably one of them. That's out here making a pretty decent living doing this hip hop thing. And you don't see us plastered on Rapzilla. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you've got to take care of business. You got to, you got to, no, okay. Find out who what, what's your niche, um, and stick to a plan. Like, know what your why is. Why are you doing it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, when we first, when we were doing it, uh, and I'm talking about even Lecrae and all these guys, a lot of us was like ministry over industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ministry, ministry, ministry. We'll we'll do it for free. You know, we were young and you know we were fresh out of college. In college, we didn't know any better, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's good to have that as the why, but the reality of it is you can be ministry minded and business minded at the same time. And they work hand in hand to make much of Jesus and put him on display. Cause it's just a business. 
You know what I'm saying? Like if I said, man, I want to, I want to go sell cell phones. Okay. It's still a business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think one of the biggest reasons why I had to step away from Christian hip hop for a while is because you had all these arguments going on, bro. You had the, the theology arguments going on. You had the, is hip hop uh, a Christian thing? Can it be a, you had that argument going on, but then you had these new arguments that were coming out where guys were denouncing the name Christian hip hop and just calling themselves hip hoppers. I'm a hip hopper. That's a Christian. I'm a Christian rapper. Rapper. That's a, who cares, bro? At the end of the day, it's all about the heart of the issue. And even in that, it's about the why. 